This is the Guns Magazine podcast, quick hit episode number 42. Hi there, and welcome to another quick hit episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. I'm your host and the editor of Guns Magazine, Brent Wheat. Thanks for joining us as we talk to the interesting people who make up the world of shooting, hunting, and the firearms industry. Today's episode is another gathering of our resident gun cranks, myself, publisher Roy Huntington, and American handgunner editor Tom McHale, as we answer one of the most common questions we get, which is, what do we, the editors here at FMG, personally carry as defensive firearms? But first, before we get started, I would like to remind you this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast is sponsored by our friends at Kimber. Kimber was founded with the singular purpose of making every firearm the best it can possibly be with a fit and finish that only practiced hands can achieve and appreciate. Whether you carry a Kimber for personal protection, hunting, or competition, know that their promise of quality without compromise is how they measure success. To learn more about Kimber firearms, visit KimberAmerica.com. In today's episode, we talk about the guns we personally carry all the time. I will note, it's important to point out, we're not saying you have to do or carry things the same way we do, but it's always enlightening to understand how other people solve common problems. The gun cranks have nearly 100 years of combined experience carrying guns, so hopefully you'll find something in today's episode that will make your life a little safer and more comfortable. And now here's our Guns Magazine podcast quick hit episode on what we personally carry. We were going to talk about our everyday carry guns. We get the question every week. People just want to know. We offer suggestions, but they, okay, really, what do you carry? So we're actually going to tell you. So what do you carry, Roy? I bet it's got wheels. Is it a wheelie thing? You know, not necessarily. Um, People are probably sick and tired of me showing this old rusty LCP2, but this is always in my pocket and no matter what. And then in addition to that, I'm being innovative. And remember, we're not saying that this is the perfect thing to carry, but I think like, it's like, I like to look at other people's shops, their wood shops and their metal shops, because it's interesting to see what other people do. It's like, oh, that's how you set your table saw up. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think this is that kind of a thing. It's like, you're not necessarily looking to copy, but you're thinking, oh, that's interesting. So I've got a Springfield Armory Hellcat here in a Mitch Rosen extraordinary gun leather holster. Uh, I like vertical non-cant. And I think most cops I know do the same thing because we carried, you know, for years, for decades, we carried a strong side vertical can't duty holster. And it's just really hard to get used to anything like FBI can't and behind. Is the, is the vertical can't on the duty belt because of all the other junk in the way? Like a, a forward can't, would that get in the way of whatever's in front of it on your belt? I always Sometimes. wondered that. I, I think you it said may you be- carry vertical, but I never knew why. Yeah, it may be fashionable. I think that sometimes, though, at least for me, it's easier to draw because you can stand up. You don't have to lean forward and do the FBI draw thing. Yeah. Also, a muzzle pointing backwards in a police car often will push against the seat. And so it pushes against your side the whole time you're driving. At least it did for me. And uh, we have been experienced experience with or experimented with some muzzle forward holsters, which were yeah. all very comfortable, except the grip sometimes would push against you. So that's actually why. And I don't think I know a cop anywhere who doesn't carry a vertical scabbard if they're on their, you know, on their belt. The, uh, so I normally have the Hellcat. If I'm going into town, I, I put it on my holster. Uh, I also do something that not, I haven't really seen before. And I think, Dare I say it, this is maybe innovative. I don't know. Uh, This is a pocket holster for my LCP. It's a spare one I had laying around. But inside, I keep my spare magazine for the Hellcat. And I just put it in my other pocket. And it actually works out really, really well. It's very comfortable and it's easy to get through. It's not a speed load. I mostly carry a second magazine in case something goes wrong with my gun. And I have to rip the magazine out and, you know, clear the trash out and just stick a new magazine in. That's really the only reason I do that. And then if I've got a pocket carry, I have this Blackhawk, this kind of sticky stuff, you know, I don't know what it's called. And then I I like to carry my old uh, Kimber Solo in it. And that's predominantly in the wintertime, 
sometimes I tend to hang a J frame Smith and Wesson in a renegade ankle holster. And the, this is, these are made by the wilderness tactical. Uh, you can find them online and it's the world's most comfortable ankle holster period. I always have a knife of some kind like this bench made knife. And then I always have a flashlight or two. Uh, this what, is do you, fire. what do you not care? I'm gonna think, I know. I'm sitting here wondering how much gear are you going to pull well, you don't up? Carry your all desk. of this at one time, but you know you do. And then, <laughs> and then in my truck, I always have my Winchester Model 94 <laughs> cut down 3030, which yeah. I cut down myself. It's actually yeah. pretty fun. It's just a, it's a little short barrel. Yeah, and. Uh, and because, and notice that I have a hearing protection attached to it in case you have time to put it on. Of course you it's do. It's really loud, you know, <laughs> yeah. because there's no problem you can't solve with a 30-30. Trust me. <laughs> you know, so, all right, I don't carry all of that at once. But you see what's happening, though, is that they're, they're kind of small to medium. They're lightweight. There's something that's not a pain in the neck to carry all the time. I always have some spare ammunition, not because I'm probably going to have to reload, but because in case something goes wrong, you have a way to make your gun you know, work again. And so that's it. I'm, d- I'm done now. Your that's turn. A, that's Tom. all you carry, huh? That's all you carry. <laughs> well, I, well, can I show you mine? Some, my everyday carry gun? Can I, can I, can I? Right there. See, this is a, got a TV on it. Huh? It does have a TV on it. See, right? <laughs> right there. Um, a SIG P320X Compact. So... Cut for an optic. This is actually the the fairly new uh, Sig Sauer Romeo One Pro optic. So it's an always on model. Since it's not technically always on, it's got an, a uh, motion sensor inside. So anytime you've got it on or moving around, it's uh, the dot is on when it's sitting on a desk or in the safe. The the dot shuts off to save battery. So the the battery in here runs for years. You don't have to worry about that. But you know it's roughly the size of say a Glock 19, maybe a hair smaller. So it's good, good carry size. And it, you know, the site's going to turn on because if you ever draw it, your hand's probably shaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Garan- it's guaranteed to be guaranteed that, to turn on by in God that scenario. <laughs> <laughs> we should tell Sig that they could use it in their advertising. No, but, that, but that's been the most the most regular. See now now in fairness, doing what I do for a living, I kind of have to change carry guns all the time. I mean, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna run a gun through the paces and test it, you gotta you gotta lug it around for a few weeks and you know see how it feels. So yeah, that's kind exactly. of a stand. But what about you, Brent? What's your everyday? Wait, that's okay. all? Oh no, that's it? Heck yeah. no. <laughs> I was just going to give somebody else a turn and then come back to more. Oh, all right. You know, you know, all right. I had all kinds of stuff all sitting right. around the desk here. Yeah. Well, I, I'm dying since we have played uh, Let's Top That. I got to move my microphone up and my body back. And I actually, I want you to understand, I actually carry this. And I'm going to show you what it is. Now, let me preface this by saying I've always carried a backpack usually or a man purse with me. And in the last couple of years, I've kind of gotten away from that because I always keep my truck loaded out and I usually have, you know, what I need with me, but the world's gotten a little crazy. So I'm kind of going back to maybe carrying a little more than I I usually would. So um, here's what I'm carrying in my backpack. (laughs) I'm I'm worried. (laughs) Yeah. Lord (laughs) only knows what this is. Remember, because Will Dabbs wrote up that Gatling gun the other day. You know, you know. I know you this probably is, got some old SWAT connections and could get flashbangs, but remember, the rest of us can't buy those. So, <laughs> okay, this is a Mystery Ranch Cooley pack. It's a nice size. I've I've written it uh, up in uh, Guns Magazine. It's uh, my current, you know, carry on the airplane kind of pack. So now it's my EDC pack. So, I I'll admit this is maybe the most practical thing, but it is reassuring. I've got my tourniquets and all that kind of stuff. Oh my god! And I knew it. Also, I knew it. <laughs> Wait, do Fast your technical the grimace there while you do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, we're laughing with you, not at you. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Yeah, we're <laughs> well, there. We go. It's my Ruger uh, PC9 carbine chassis rifle. I've got the uh, uh, Leupold Delta Point Pro on it. Yeah, and uh, several. Uh, standard capacity magazines, uh, Glock magazines that fit the, uh, the well. So if I've got my backpack, I've got a long rifle. And 
you know, it'll keep minute of bad guy at a hundred yards. So oh. it will not take the place of a, uh, a main battle rifle, but uh, I can carry this where I need to carry it. So well, you'd worry him aside, to death. Those, you know, those are surprisingly we, accurate. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. The takedowns. Do you remember the North Hollywood shooting? Remember? Yeah. And so all the cops were there and everybody had their handguns. Nobody had rifles or anything. Shotguns weren't effective. And when I was watching it happen on the TV, I thought if someone had a 1022 with a scope, uh-huh. they could have solved that problem. Yep. You know, and, and that's how they ended up solving it was they broke into a gun store and started issuing rifles and shotguns yeah. out to everybody. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I remember actually, cause what they did was they went and they told some guy, they said, Hey, we need to have some AR 15s yeah. and he was going to do 4473s on them and stuff, but they, <laughs> they pulled rank on him like, yeah, no, so yeah, he just, right now. Right. Yeah, yeah. I heard later though, th- that he sold those guns for like a real premium used well, in the North Hollywood shootout. Yeah. It was pretty cool. <laughs> so this is my actual carry gun. Um, and I'm, like the other guys i'm always carrying something different uh to test it out but this is my current favorite of all time it's the uh mossberg mc2c and we were at gunsight when they announced this and uh, i've got one it's it's everything that i want in a carry gun it's dehorned uh it just fits my hand really well uh it's got good sights I'm, I'm very pleased with it. And the more I carry it, the more I'm pleased with it. So I've paired that up with a hog holster, big fan of those and the utility clip. Um, I've got no complaints about it. I'm carrying uh, uh, black Hills, honey badger in it, of course. So my other one, if I'm going someplace where I really do feel like I may have to produce a firearm, this is my other, this is my old standby. It's a, uh, Colt uh, gun sight officer's model, and uh, I took my 250 with it, and I did fairly well. So I have shot it a lot. It's got some good honest wear on it, but you talk about one of those guns that it's an extension of your body. This is so. The only reason I probably don't carry it more is uh, it's blued gun, so I'm afraid day to day uh, I might scab it up because I'm not super religious about wiping it down, and it's just a little bit bigger, but. Uh, Again, like I said, if I'm going someplace where I, I think there's a real risk of, of needing a handgun, this is the one that goes with me. And I've got it in my Simply Rugged Alligator uh, dead, sweet. dead Sexy Holster, eh? Dead Sexy. And then, of, of course, I've got the matching uh, magazine pouch. Yeah. And then, of course, I always have to carry my little friend. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend. Yep. It's a uh, North American Arms 22 Magnum and the serial number is my initials and my old unit number. And uh, that's kind of special to me. I haven't had to shoot any terrorists with it or anything, but uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it gives you a nice warm feeling down in your pocket or wherever you would choose to carry it. So as it were, you know, you brought up a good point though, because a lot of people don't realize North American arms is really good about that. If you order a special gun from them or any of their guns, oftentimes they can give you a custom serial number. And yep. it's like, I got one for my wife, Susie for a birthday, you know, and I got one for my daughter one time and you put custom serial numbers on it and they're very, very affordable and, and they're really cool little guns. I have a pug uh, that I also carry. It's usually in my, my uh, it's like a chore coat that I have around here. I use it more in the wintertime. I always keep it on the inside pocket and I keep it loaded with shot cartridges and you use it for yeah. snakes and, you know, rats in the pole barn and stuff like that. So, and that I darn fox. I see it. I see her in that darn fox that ate my chickens the other day. <laughs> Two ch- if fox, if you're listening, we're gunning for you. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know, I'm seeing funny. something uh, that there's some continuity here. And I think it's probably a message we should relate to people. And that is the fact that our sort of go-to carry guns tend to be modestly sized, good quality, nine millimeter, you know, have more than five or six rounds in them. The guns that we're comfortable with and we know that work, you know, and I think there's a good lesson there for people is that it's yeah. there, there are, there's three miracle guns here and they're all three different. And so, mm-hmm. which means to me that any gun that you're comfortable with can be a miracle gun, you know? Yep. I'm I'm definitely more comfortable with double stack size, you know, it, I guess, I guess they call it, you know, like kind of like the X compact I showed a minute ago, this is a Beretta um, PX4 carry and, you know, kind of a compact gun. It's 15 plus one capacity for nine millimeter. These are neat. They're, 
they're uh, kind of not your your everyday mainstream gun. This is the one that uh, Ernest Langdon kind of designed for Beretta as he was getting Langdon tactical going. So it's got all the the nifty bells and whistles and stuff, you know, upgraded sights and action and kind of decocker only configuration. Nifty little handgun. So I typically carry strong side, normal. What are you guys carrying most of the time? And having said that, I carry it all kinds of places. Tonight I was carrying off body at a meeting and on body also, but uh, I, I used to wear an ankle gun a lot. Uh, that little one can be hidden many places that we won't talk about. So what do you, where are you guys carrying most of the time? Yeah. Remind me not to borrow that pistol from you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I favor pocket carry during the summertime, just because where we are in Missouri, it's short pants and tank top, you know, basically. And uh, once we transition to winter, uh, I tend to still have the LCP2 in my pocket, but then I go to a strong side belt vertical scabbard carry if I go into town. And that's generally how it is. Uh, I, I will say though, and you brought up a good point, Brent, when you said because of the craziness happening, but two, three years ago when it just, I don't know, something struck me and I was less comfortable going into town unless I was better armed. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there was once or twice when I was off duty and I was a policeman and I pulled a J frame five shot 38 to help a situation out once was to cover another officer. And it's funny because two seconds prior, I felt as if I was adequately armed for off duty. Yeah. And then when I drew the five shot J frame, all I could see was how tiny this gun looked in my <laughs> hand. <laughs> and yeah. I just went, note to self, <laughs> you know, have more gun. Of course we always recidivate. And so now, you know, it's like, oh, I'll carry the J frame. I'll carry the LCP. Or she you know, when we, know, when we I transitioned to auto pistols, it, it was the beginning of the, of the, basically the SIG dynasty. It was SIG and Beretta and Smith and Wesson at the time. This yeah. would have been in the middle eighties. And so I had a P225. So just like you have single, double single action. And that was pretty much all we could carry. So all the Smiths, all the Berettas, everybody was single double. And everyone used to complain about, oh, that transition from double action to single action, we're all going to die. And yeah. you know what, what I found it wasn't a problem at all. And in our on-duty shootings, the guys that were carrying these guns were hitting with the first round, and they were hitting with the following nine or 37 rounds. Yeah. So it's not an yeah. issue at all. And, of course, a, a G19, you know, you can't yeah. improve on perfection. Hey, this is um, – you know what? I've, I, I, I would always – Glock all the way. It's going to run all day long. No issues there. I have a little trouble pointing Glocks. They just kind of point naturally high for me, but I do mm -hmm. like them. This one I've been playing with just the 43 X. I put one of those Hogue uh, beaver tail handalls. And the difference in this guy is it's, it's more of a solid grip sleeve and it tends to solve that pointing problem to some degree for me. So but how many guns are we going to pull up and show on screen here? I don't know. As many <laughs> as we out have. Of control. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't even got started yet. But so <laughs> let's, let's, you know, I think we've uh, had a, a good representation of kind of what we carry. And again, as gun riders, we tend to carry different stuff because we want to try them, you know, out in the world. Let's talk about the stuff you've got near your desk or in the bedroom. Uh, Right now, I've got a uh, uh, Glock 22 in my bedside stand, and it, Tom, it has a laser on it. All right. It has a laser, like a green it. laser. I like um, it. And then that's so I can get Freaking to my- laser beams. <laughs> exactly. I get to my 870 under the bed that's uh, tricked out. It's got a, uh, I forget, an aim point comp T3, T7, I forget, and yeah. uh, uh, a uh, Surefire, I think it's a Surefire light. And, yeah. And- uh, so th there's another one and I can't say what it is because it's embargoed and top that's a secret. term that it's top secret until we're allowed to talk about it, but it's a next week, very, week after th keep us posted. Oh, they were supposed to bring it out, but they're not going to because they're so busy making other mm -hmm. guns, but it's a very small thing. And uh, it, uh, it can put uh, ounces of lead downrange very fast, and it's very small. So as soon as they say I can talk about it, I'll be all, all over it. But then also my new truck gun is the, uh, our cover gun that is just coming up uh, in another month or two. It's the SIG, uh, I'm sorry, Springfield St. Victor 308 pistol. I'm, I'm sure you can rig up a holster oh. for that if you're creative. Oh. <laughs> Roy, get in your shop. See what you can come up with. 
All, <laughs> all I can hope is if, you know, I live, I, it's not a secret. I live outside of Indianapolis and they've had some problems too. And I just avoid it. But there's that little side of me thinking if they ever, if any of the nonviolent social justice warriors ever try to drag me out of the car, it might be interesting. I don't it's want going to be really to loud for a minute. It's going to be really <laughs> yeah. loud. You yeah. know, I I got to say that it, I think if someone just stumbled onto this and not someone in the shooting fraternity, they would tend to look at this and say, well, these are a bunch of really paranoid schizophrenics and they've got all <laughs> these guns and stuff like yeah. that. But I have to tell you, if you have not experienced that microsecond when you need a gun and the nearest gun is five giant steps away from you, then you're never going to understand what we're talking about. And that, uh, I mean, every time I've ever needed a gun, I, there is no time period. No. And lest we digress the other day, we were joking a minute ago about the, the damn Fox chasing my chickens and killing two of them. I was in my garage. We have a ring thing in the backyard, you know, where you, it has a video and my phone was on my workbench. It went ding, ling, 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 ling. And I said, well, that's odd. Why is there somebody in my backyard? And I, turned it on and, and the video came up and there was a fox and old Blondie the chicken was cowering in the corner and I dropped what I was doing. I ran in from the garage. Susie was in the kitchen. I said, Susie, there's a fox after the chickens. And I ran to the back door and grabbed my CZ 22 Magnum that I have stashed there yeah. and out onto the deck and opened up on this fox as he ran away. And I'm sorry, boys and girls, but you don't have time to go to the safe. No. You know, and you don't have time to take the lock off the gun. And that's how those things happen. Now, granted, this was not a big deal, was, you know, but, but that is why we have multiple guns stashed in different places safely. I don't safely. have any small children at home, you know. Yeah. You know, Masad Ayub, I was having uh, breakfast with him uh, a couple of months ago, and he said something that really struck me. And I don't even remember what it was, but it was just kind of an offhand comment. He said, Yes, let me, if I can do my, my moss. Well, the older you get, the more firearms you tend to carry. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> he's right. Exactly. He's absolutely right. You realize you're not a young buck anymore and you can't whip 27 guys and you're not the fastest runner and knife expert in the world. And I'm old and frail and, and delicate and I, I need to carry personal protection, you know? What, Tom? I'm delicate. I saw a great picture. Delicate. Delicate. Yeah, deli you're a delicate flower. That's I am. I am. <laughs> I saw a great picture of this guy who's even older than me, uh, but it was some like 90 year old guy and he's holding the M1 Garand. And it was kind of a meme going around. It said, The older I get, the less I worry about going to prison. <laughs> and I thought, You know what? There's a lesson, bad guys. You better pay attention uh, to that, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> it's the truth. That's the whole show we really need to do. We try to avoid so much current events because, you know, the world's just not a happy place. We're just trying to have some fun, but there's right. a lot we could talk about. And I got to say, I'm seeing more and more videos of uh, certain groups that good Americans are taking care of. And I don't want to get too much more specific than that, but sometimes when I'm feeling down and I'm feeling bad about the world, I got to look at some of those videos and just giggle and <laughs> giggle and giggle. <laughs> oh, son, that was a bad move on your part. And a lot of those people have never been told no or had discipline administered. And it's, yeah. it's pretty entertaining. So that's my current affairs hunk. <laughs> At risk of losing our G rating here, um, question came in and you guys got to fess up and be honest. It would, which of you have a gun in your bathroom? <laughs> well, if i have my pants on <laughs> my lcp2 is in my pocket <laughs> i might well, i might i i have uh we were talking about uh is it uh, soft hold magnets they're fantastic you can hide guns everywhere but having said that i have six granddaughters all under the age of six. So we actually have a procedure. If we think the, the kids are coming by with the grandkids, mm -hmm. we sweep the house because as like Roy said, we don't have small kids. So they're in places little kids can get them. And that's something that we are very cognizant about. And my wife and I both cross check each other, literally like pilots, you know, yeah. did you, did you, and did you get this one? I'm actually thinking way. at this, this point to make an actual checklist. And then I also told uh, our, our sons and daughters and son-in-laws, daughter-in-laws, I expect you to ask me when you get here, if the guns are put up, I will not be offended by that because especially on a drop in, it'll be, Oh, it's so great to see everybody. And then 
hopefully among all the adult brains there, one of us will remember, did you put up the guns? So yeah. I just wanted to get that out there. Hey, but coming back to the bathroom thing, I just remembered the the latest issue of American Handgunner coming out in a whenever week or so. Um, we published a reader mail. A guy wrote in and he kept a revolver. He lived in kind of a rough neighborhood. He kept a revolver in his bathroom. He lived by himself, so he didn't have the, the child issue that you're talking about, uh, kind of between a pile of towels in his bathroom. And he steps out of the shower one day make a long story short, the bathroom is right next to the back door. And I guess there's steps on the back deck coming into the back door. And he, he steps out of the shower and he sees some guy prying open the back door, literally two feet from where he's standing. So he grabs his revolver and he kind of taps on the window with the barrel of it. And the, the, guy, the guy just leaped off the deck and took off running. And uh, the, the reader who wrote this in says he, he has had a war trophy ever since, which consists of his pry bar. Wow. <laughs> well, that goes though is if you need it, you need it now. You know, yep. I know yep. our own John Taffin has said in an article that he, he keeps a, uh, two guns, I think in the bathroom a, a charter arms, 44 bulldog yeah. and a North American arms danger, as I recall. So, and it, but it's number one and number two, is that yeah number one and number two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? I we had to go there. And walked right into that. Okay. I know. But people say that they look and they say, Oh, you're just paranoid. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm just careful. And we're prepared. Prepared. Yeah. I don't know. You know, we make we make light of this, but I think we're all speaking from personal experience. I know Tom, you had a couple of incidents happen to you. I've certainly had hundreds through my life. Brent, I know you have too. And the 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 consistent thing is is if you need a gun, then you need it right now. And that's why people worry about what gun should I carry, what gun should I carry? If it's like, well, just carry a gun. Okay. Yeah. Make sure it's a good one. Make sure it has good ammunition in it. Make sure you know how to use it. Make sure you understand the laws. Uh, because, you know, hey, you know, one more thing can I add this to is we bounce around a lot of the way we carry and, but it's a problem. And the problem is if you, if you change the place on your body where you carry your gun all the time, then when an emergency happens, you, you're going to just like kind of melt down. I went from, uh, strong side carry to shoulder holes to carry one time when I was a young policeman and I had strong side carried for several years. And then I remember one night I came home and I opened up the front door of my apartment and someone had burglarized it. And so as soon as I opened up the front door, I saw the disarray and I knew something was up and I'm, I, this, is, this is absolutely the truth. I nearly pulled my underwear right out of my pants trying to get my gun out until I finally remembered that it was in my shoulder holster. Yeah. And, yeah. But, but for, I don't, maybe it was one second, but it felt like about an hour and a half. Uh, I was in pretty strong panic mode there until so yeah. that's just something to keep in mind. If you're bouncing around like that. I carry, I almost always carry at three o'clock on the waist. I used to kind of go like four or four thirty, but I'm a lot faster from three and it's just, you know, less, yeah. less fumbling and less hang up on the cover shirt and everything like that. So yeah. Any final thoughts, guys, on this episode of Gun Cranks Live? I think the key is is have one that you're comfortable with. You know, somebody, one of you guys uh, brought up the point a few minutes ago, you know, when, when you need it, it needs to be close. Um, yep. Yep. And carry it, you know, carry it. And that it doesn't stop with the gun. It only begins buying the it gun. That's begins. the first step. And then, so you have to learn the laws and when am I allowed to pull it out? And then what happens and mm -hmm. how gun handling skills and safety and children. And I mean, it's, it's a huge thing. And I think people are too focused on that, on just the gun. Yeah. And, yep. and we deal with that constantly with readers and it's why we do the articles we do in the magazines. If you look at the articles in the magazine, it covers all of these things all the time. Yeah. And so pay attention to them, please. Yeah. Yep. Well, I hope you got some good information during our fun show and tell of our personal carry firearms. And with that, we also hope you're enjoying the Guns Magazine podcast. Please tell all your friends, even those brainless liberals. Guns Magazine is number one in the business, and we're using our decades of friendships to bring you the most interesting chats in the gun world. If you've got questions, comments, or a guest you'd like to recommend for the show, please email me. That's editor at gunsmagazine.com. Make sure you don't miss out on anything by subscribing to us on your favorite podcast directory and YouTube. Of course, you can always listen and download our episodes at gunsmagazine.com. 
And while you're at it, don't forget to check out our sister publication, American Handgunner Magazine, at AmericanHandgunner.com. And finally, before we go, I'd like to remind you to check out our sponsor, Kimber Firearms, at KimberAmerica.com. That's it for this episode of the Guns Magazine podcast. For the entire group of deplorables here at FMG Publications, I'm Guns Magazine editor Brent Wheat. Now get out there and get shooting. Oh,